Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I'm going to look at the Lithuanian unique unit, the Lytus. To get a picture of how strong they are, I want to compare them to a more familiar unit. And in this case, I think the natural comparison is to the Knight. Both benefit from the Lithuanian's Relic bonus and generally have the same heavy cavalry role. The Lytus are unique though for having a special ability where they ignore armor when they attack. Yes, Teutons, you heard that right. So how good of an ability is that? Well, let's check it out. To start off in Castle Age, in terms of their stats, the Lightus and Knight have the same HP. But the Lightus is a bit more of a glass cannon, with two more attack and one lower melee armor. The cost is similar, but not identical, making for a bit of a messy comparison when it comes to value. Being a more gold intensive unit isn't necessarily a bad thing in Castle Age, when food is in demand for getting villagers and upgrades, but certainly in Imperial Age the higher gold cost can become a consideration. Now you might reasonably expect the Lightus to have extra range, like the Step Lancer, given they have basically the same weaponry. Apparently though, it doesn't work that way, and the Lightus has the same range as the Nightline. Their higher attack and ability to ignore armor mean they win handily against knights with equal numbers, while also costing fewer resources in the first place. One on one, the Lightus have about a third of their HP left, but in larger groups those small victories spiral into a more one-sided result. Now, it's not a perfect comparison since Lightus require castles to make, so getting your numbers up to that point is harder than it is for regular stable units. Their slightly faster creation time helps in that regard, and getting the elite upgrade reduces their creation time even a bit more. The two units are nearly identical in terms of speed, though the Lightus has an extra tile of sight. The differences here are pretty small though and unlikely to really impact how they're used. The biggest difference is the Lightus special ability to ignore armor, so let's see how that works. It turns out that applies to any inherent melee armor as well as defensive blacksmith upgrades. Against high melee armor units like Teutonic Knights and Boyars for example, the Lightus does its full attack plus any upgrades you have on top of it. Against any melee unit, the Lightus is going to take one more damage than the Knight because of its one lower melee armor, but should be doing between two and six more damage. Two from its higher attack, usually up to another two based on the unit's inherent armor that's being ignored, and up to another two from enemy blacksmith techs. In practice against Teutonic Knights, Lightus end up trading better than two to one in terms of resources spent when going head to head. Regular Knights, on the other hand, perform terribly in that matchup. The focus right now is on Castle Age, but just to show you in the post-Imperial, again, Lightus are going to have amazing value, while Paladins do even worse against elite Teutonic Knights. Against Bowyers, it's a similar thing, where the Knight is normally overpowered by the high melee armor, while the Lightus completely ignores it. In this case, it's even slightly cost-efficient, where the Knight definitely is not. Now the ability to ignore armor unfortunately doesn't help against buildings, where they do two more damage than the knight simply because of their two higher attack. As far as I can see, nothing unusual seems to be going on there. I was curious to see though how they compare to knights against some common units that they'll likely encounter. Now I'm not going to factor in their relic bonus here, which gives up to plus four attack, since it helps both units by the same amount, and it makes the comparison more complicated than it needs to be. But just keep in mind that both of these units can perform a bit better than the test show, if, unlike me, you normally remember to pick up relics. Starting off against one of the key counters to cavalry, when slightly outnumbered by pikes, there's a pretty noticeable advantage for the Lightus over the knight. It's not quite cost effective, especially if gold is a consideration, but assuming the pikes have castle age upgrades, the Lightus takes them out in four attacks, as compared to the knight six. On the other hand, pikes take out either of those two units in five attacks. I'd say it's not a fight you want to take, but in a pinch, the Lightus is going to justify its higher cost. Another common counter is the Camel, with a plus 9 attack bonus against Cavalry. With all upgrades, the Knights survive an extra hit thanks to one more melee armor, but need three more hits to take a Camel Rider down, meaning again the Lightus performs much better in comparison, to the point that, in this test anyway, they traded cost effectively in terms of total resources and equally in gold against generic Camels. From those tests, it's pretty clear to me they hold up better against the normal cavalry counters than knights in Castle Age. 
These definitely aren't fights you should be seeking out, especially when gold is in short supply, but ignoring armor is having a noticeable effect. Now against range units, the two take the same number of shots since their HP and pierce armor are identical. Archers tend to have little to no melee armor, maybe a couple of blacksmith upgrades, but even then the attack upgrades are almost always prioritized. Functionally, I wouldn't say there's a consistent enough difference to be a factor. And again, weighing the cost of a castle against stables would be the bigger consideration in my mind against a lot of ranged units. The last unit in Castle Age I want to take a look at is the Ram. It's funny that ignoring armor actually seems to hurt the Lightus in this case. Knights end up doing one more damage, thanks to some shenanigans with the Ram's 0-3 melee armor. The difference is pretty minor, but if a Ram ever survives with less than 10 HP against your Lightus, be prepared to be heckled by your Knights for the next few minutes. So to summarize Castle Age, the Lightus essentially functions like a Knight with slightly higher attack. On paper, I think it does justify its higher gold cost, and the lower food weighting in particular can make it easier on your economy in some ways when making villagers. That said, I wouldn't consider the two units mutually exclusive. It's easier to open with stables and go into knights, but later after you get a castle up, you can easily mix in some lightus to give your army a bit more punch, or make use of an extra production building. Moving on now, let's take a look at the Imperial Age. If you're investing in a unit throughout Castle, it's nice to know you're able to upgrade and still get some value out of them in the late game. And here we see a pretty big difference in the upgrade cost for the Paladin. At this point, I think it does make sense to pick one of the units and roll with it, as opposed to paying for two very expensive upgrades. The upgrade times are also very different, with the Paladin coming at the fastest around 4.5 minutes after reaching Imperial Age, while the Elite Lightus upgrade takes only 45 seconds. The Cavalier upgrade isn't even half finished by that point. To compare their stats in Imperial Age, the Elite Lightus is strictly better than the Cavalier, hands down. Even without its armor ignoring effect, it's the strictly better unit, so I'm not going to spend any time looking at that comparison. The Paladin though makes for an interesting matchup. It has 30 more HP and one extra pierce armor, with the Lightus only having its armor piercing bonus to offset that. Now remember the strength of that bonus scales as your opponent's armor increases, and units normally have 0-2 pierce armor enhanced by another 3 with blacksmith techs, meaning the lightest, functionally speaking, will have 3-5 to five more attack a lot of the time, and that makes for an interesting distinction. The lightest is the high damage output unit, while the paladin is the tankier one, and more than in castle age that gives each of them a more specialized role. Against heavy melee units, the lightest is generally going to be more dominant. Its 5 more attack means it takes out a Paladin, for instance, in 10 hits, while taking 12, making that a good exchange any way you look at it. What's making this work though is the Paladin's relatively high melee armor, which contributes to its high cost. Lightus get a much smaller boost against low armor enemies, which anti-cavalry units tend to be. Against Halberdiers, for example, the two units should actually do around the same in the long run. Both kill Halberdiers in 4 attacks, while taking 5 Halberdier attacks to go down. The Paladin's slightly lower gold cost here might be a factor to consider. Against Camels, it's again not a big difference. The Paladin needs two extra hits to bring one down, but also survives for two more hits. Unlike in Castle Age, I wouldn't say the Lightus is obviously holding up better here. In fact, against ranged units, the Paladin greatly outperforms. Its one extra pierce armor and 30 more HP mean against archers and basically any ranged units except skirmishers, they'll do much better. Against Arbalest, for example, Paladins can take 60 shots, as opposed to 38 for the Elite Lightus. Arrows from Town Centers also have a large difference in effectiveness, and this is where the Paladin really shines in comparison, taking 3 times as many arrows. Now, raiding is a major role for heavy cavalry in the late game, so that's something that's hard to ignore, and almost a deal breaker in its own right. You have to be conscious when using the Elite Lightus not to sit under Town Center or Castle Fire for too long, while Paladins can basically brush it off. Overall, outside of against two specific high melee armor enemies, I don't see the Elite Lightus really distinguishing itself in Imperial Age, aside from the ability to quickly tech into, and the fact that it does trade cost effectively with Paladins. The fact it also costs more gold while holding up worse against range units and defenses is a pretty big drawback. Combined with how much easier it is to initially go into knights during castle age, I have to see knights as the better default. I keep coming back to stables versus castles in terms of production ability, but I feel like it's such an important point. After massing up knights, it kind of makes sense to continue with them as well, and according to the tests I've done at least, 
The Paladin ends up being a bit slower to come in, but a near universally better choice in the late game. Of course, the Lightus is a solid option if you're already doing a castle drop, in which case the castle versus stable thing isn't as big of a factor. It'll always have its very specialized role as well against Teutonic Knights and Boyars, and could even be a viable option against Mass Paladin. Really, if in doubt, what I'm trying to say is that, as always, just make whichever unit you think looks cooler. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.